So what happens here? We got a handful of computers. These guys been working uh, nonstop. Oh, we got some eating here. <laughs> getting yeah, ready for the we're getting ready for the show. At this point, but uh, you're basically uh, having a look at where our sales team works. And uh, we have some parts laid out just to show some of the quality of what we do. You know, a lot of times photos online kind of give an impression of design, but don't give an impression of quality. And when you actually can feel something, you can see that it's not your run of the mill uh, carbon fiber part or whatever it may be. So a lot of this is kind of show and tell and the stuff that's over here on the table are just various examples of things that we make here. So this one is uh, obviously a steering wheel. Uh, we, we redo the steering wheel and make it more of what you would find in like a Lamborghini or a McLaren. So you have carbon fiber on the top and on the bottom. In these areas, we make them custom to order. This customer wanted black leather and black stitching. Uh, we do any color leather, any color suede, Alcantara, whatever it might be. Uh, that's just part of our custom interiors. That we and how many, how many employees do you have? Uh, uh, 25 in total, 12 on the manufacturing side. And then what, so what, uh, what are the other positions you have? Uh, well, we, you know, we run a standard business, so we have a sales side and an operations side and warehouse and logistics and uh, usual stuff just to try to get it from beginning to end. You know, we have to sell the parts, make the parts, ship the parts, and account for the parts. So all that, all that's covered. Good stuff, fun oh, stuff. Yeah. I imagine uh, in a few years we'll see you at 100 employees, 200. <laughs> oh, I will look very tired if that's yeah. the case. I'm tired already, but I, I can't manage anything that big. I'll, I'll lose my mind. The problem with scaling is you got to let go of more stuff and uh, yeah, have others do more. But. Yeah, but I'm having fun making parts and, and doing cool stuff. And every customer's car that we see is energizing to see someone have a, a, a more fun experience with their car. Fun leads to success. Totally. Um, so most of this is really nice to look at, almost? but is not really ever seen because it's all underneath the car. But this is the rear undertray of the car. It weighs nothing. You can see, you know, one finger. Um, it's about 70% lighter and all carbon fiber. Uh, here's a front diffuser. Normally you see just the front lip. This is upside down, but I mean, it's, it's a joke how light it is. Um, then we have some side skirts. And this is our newest item. Here's a brake rotor that we uh, make uh, using Brembo carbon ceramic rotors. It weighs nothing. Um, it is very, very light. And, you know, for most people, maybe your viewers don't really care about rotors, but they probably do care about you know, how fast the car goes or how much range a car has. To make a car go faster or go further, you have to make it lighter or you have to add more power. Um, and in our case, we made it lighter. So the idea being just physics. If you make a car light, a car will do everything better. It'll brake better, handle better, accelerate faster, go further. And that's the reason behind all these parts. It's basically motorsports well, logic for the street. Well, it's not a Tesla, but I, I have to admit, I'd love, I love to get behind the i3 because uh, it's so light and then has such such fun torque there. It's uh, really a blast to drive. Uh, I love the i3s, but I don't love the way they look. To me, they're... <laughs> I mean, it's personal preference. The yeah, Model S is such a, a sexy car. The i3 is maybe a little bit too functional um, in a way where it's its own thing. People like it. I don't want to knock anyone that likes it, but uh, the Model S has my heart. It was fun, I, fun driving the i3 and i8 back to back. Uh, the i8 is, of course, a beautiful car, but beautiful it's, car. Uh, uh, yeah. I know it's a lot of fun to drive, but, but it was funny because uh, I thought the i3 is actually more fun to drive. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I think the so, i8 is so light, and then the, the, the full, I mean, you get the instant torque a little bit with the i8, yeah. but then you then it's a delay and the, and, the, and the engine kicking in, and it's just not the same experience of just flying off with the full mm -hmm. electricity, in my, in my opinion. It was, I was like, wow, that's not even quite as fun as the i3. In my, but it's then there's a part of it that is, that is totally different and awesome. Yeah. It's hard to talk about these cars, though, They're because totally the, so different. That and the i8, for as amazing as it looks, it, it must be frustrating BMW to some degree, the fact oh. that a Model X SUV would destroy an <laughs> i8, even on a racetrack, yeah. and then still have more storage capacity, and still go a further distance, and have more power. In every metric you can measure, the i8 looks like it should defeat anything, but in reality, uh, a simple looking soccer mom SUV yeah. just destroys it in every category. Totally. Yeah, so uh, I love the i8. The I think the design the is great, but it's it's lacking in function. The same with the Porsche Panamera SC hybrid. And both of them, it's like, well, you <laughs> you just can't you just can't compete with a with an SUV from Tesla. <laughs> it's true. A Tesla is a, a few steps ahead of the Especially game. Especially if sure. unplugged performance gets its hands on it. <laughs> we hope. We like to hope stuff. So.